what is the blockchain so now that you have a little idea even if it's not too in in depth at as far why the blockchain the second important thing we need to look at is what is the blockchain so what is blockchain um let, let's go to the slides and see according to one one is referenced just below at the end at the end part of this slide it says the blockchain is a list of records called blocks that store data publicly and a chronological order i mean let's go to two this i just i'm just reading it out for you to hear second one says a blockchain is in the simplest in the simplest of terms a time stamped series of immutable records of data that is managed by a cluster of computers not owned by a single entity story 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 so i was able to pick these two definitions and add some other things to give you this definition I probably want you to listen to. The blockchain, this is the definition I want you to listen to, okay? You can check out the other ones and you can Google other ones, okay? But based on coin things, putting things together, I've been able to form this one. The blockchain is simply a database which record, in which records are stored as chains of blocks in chronological order and these records are distributed or managed by a cluster of computers i believe you can see this definition on the screen okay we're going to take it one after the other and i want to take note of the words highlighted okay i want you to pay attention to the words highlighted first of all database the first thing that, is, that was highlighted there is the word database so i said the blockchain is simply a database think of what you want to think of the blockchain is simply a database okay so now what do we mean by database i believe you guys have had exposure to database because this is a four on the level course i mean from your first year down to now you should have, have an exposure at least to what database really is so but basically a database is in simple terms is um a a, a record or collection of data in such a way that this data can be easily accessed, retrieved, and manipulated. So imagine I say we have a school, for instance, and in the school we want to keep record of every student in the school. Okay, of course we could go ahead and put every single thing in a file. I mean, and put it on shelves in some office somewhere, isn't it? Now I wouldn't call that a database. Why? Because if I say give me a list of students that are between age 17 and 19 in that school it's going to be so so crazy to find because you just have all these things on shelves somewhere you have to go to each file open each of them and check is this guy age 17 before you could even you can even assemble the record it can take months so it is not easily retrievable so one of these you must realize for something to be a database it's not just a record of data it's a record of data that can be easily manipulated I mean, assessed, retrieved, deleted, and all that. So, but the crazy thing you must know about the database is, is a record of data that can be easily assessed, manipulated, retrieved, and all that. So, once you have this idea of a database, then think of blockchain as a database. So, it is basically a record of data. But the question about blockchain is, unlike a lot of other databases, the data cannot be deleted and all that. We are going to see that anyway. So it has its own ways of operation, but the, at the simple and at the simplest form and at the core, the blockchain is just a database, a record of data. So this is the first keyword I wanted you to know, database. Now, the second keyword I want us to know is, I said the blockchain is simply a database in which records are stored as chains of blocks. So the second keyword there is chains of block so it's a database but not just a database the records are stored as chains of blocks so let's let's um, i want to wipe this up for clarity okay so that you can see there's a way to keep a record of every single person in this class okay we want to keep a record of every single person and the way we're going to do it is this we're going to have a, an empty sheet at first and we're going to pass this sheet round to everyone in this class. 
So the first person takes the sheet and writes his name. Then the second person gets his own sheet and adds his name like that, like that, like that. This is basically what we want to do. And after each person writes his name, we want to keep a record of it on the blockchain. So how will this record appear? How is it going to be done? So first of all, you must realize blockchain is a database. That means it's a record of data, kind of, but not just any kind of record of data. A record of data that can be accessed and easily and all that because it's a database. You understand? I just distinguish between a database and any form of record of data. Okay, so a database is a form of record of data that can be easily accessed and all that. I'm saying it over and over again so you understand these terms. So the blockchain is a record of data, it's a database. Where these data are stored as chains of blocks. Okay, so the first thing is on the blockchain, you must understand that each data is stored as a block. This is not really exactly how it works totally, but I'm just trying to, we are starting from a very small level then. As we grow higher, we are going to be revealing the truth and make it clearer. So, but we have to start from something you can easily grasp and then go into the complex ones. So, every single thing on the blockchain, first of all, each data is stored as a block. Each data is a block on the blockchain. Of course, this might not be the exact case, but on the phone, let's start small, then we go to the more complex one. So, each data is stored as a block. So, let's say the first time I passed the list, the first girl is Vivian and she's the first. To write a name, okay. So what happens is this: that record is going to be stored on the blockchain as a block, like this. Of course, it's not really a block, but let's let's start with this visualization. I'm going to really tell you how it appears, but it's not as if it's a real block like this. So let's say we're going to represent that data as block, and on the register, what we see is number one is Vivian. And let's say we are keeping a record of this time. So Vivian wrote her name at say 9.02 a.m. Isn't it? So the first person we have on the list is Vivian. And Vivian wrote her name at 9.02 a.m. Isn't this? So very beautiful, very beautiful. Now, usually one more thing you need to learn about blockchain. As, as I'm speaking, you will get some things. So this whole record that, that is being stored here, are you with me? It's a block, isn't it? So at the second instance, the second person, let's say the second person we have is a boy called John, called John, writes his name on the attendance. So we have this, at the second instance, we're going to have Vivian and John. I want to believe you can see me clearly. So let's say they wrote their names at 9.03 a.m. John added his name. Of course, you remember what we are trying to do? What we are trying to do is we are trying to, we have an attendance sheet. We are passing it around this class. Each person gets to write his name. And as each student writes his or her name, we, we store it on blockchain. This is what we are just trying to simulate. Okay, so at the first instance, Vivian was the first person to write her name at 9.02. We are storing the list and the time in which they wrote their name. So Vivian wrote her name at 9.02, isn't it? Then at 9.03, we have on the list Vivian and John. So the first thing we must realize that each time we store this on, because I said after each person writes his or her name, we store it on the blockchain. So each time we store a name on the blockchain, the blockchain saves that data as a block. Just try to visualize this in your head. So that's the first thing, I'm, that's what I'm trying to illustrate here. So the first time Vivian writes her name, we store it on the blockchain. So we know that at 902, Vivian is the one that's written her name. The blockchain stores this as a block. Don't try to visualize the block. It's not really going to be a block in the computer. Anyway, because computer will see this as codes and zeros and ones and all that, but just take it as a block. The second time, at 903, we now have on the list Vivian and John, no. isn't it? So, at 904, let's say we have three names. So, we have Vivian, John, then another boy called Latif joins. Latif joins. So, we have Vivian, 
we have John, then we have Latif at 9.04 a.m. All right, this is getting interesting. So the first thing I want you to visualize is each time we store the record on the blockchain, it's stored as a block, isn't it? Now, I will go further to say some things, which might start getting tricky, but I need you to just believe me at this stage, okay? You will, you will understand some of this is much later, but just believe me at this stage. Now, remember we said the blockchain is a database. So, so what that means is blockchain is basically a record of data. I have this data set, I have maybe the names of everybody in this school, or the names of everybody in the world, or names of people in the United States, or the names of students between the age, so, so, and so, age 19 and age 20 in the United States. That is a data set, isn't it? You've done a lot of data sets. Now, a blockchain is a database that stores this data, isn't it? But it doesn't just store this data anyhow, it stores each of these data as blocks. And these blocks don't exist on their own. They are chained. How? I'm going to explain. Now the first thing I want you to grasp is this. Each of these blocks you are seeing, what the blockchain does is, the blockchain gives each of these an ID. That ID is for it to be able to identify that block. Remember we said a database, one of the functionalities is that the data can be easily accessed. Okay. If I have something and I can't easily access the data, the data, it's not a database. If I have a record of data and I can't easily access the data, I, I don't think in this modern age it's going to be called a database. So a database is something where you just a record of data that the information can be easily accessed. Okay, so for this information to be easily accessed, what the blockchain does is to give each of that record, each of this data that is being stored as blocks, an ID. And so when we want to use the word this ID, when we want to use it in a in a more beautiful term or in the more blockchain term, it is called an ash. So each of these blocks has an ash that is unique to it. Okay, so basically what do we mean by ash? You guys have done something with ash in your PHP and the rest. But for those of you that are totally new to programming, don't be scared. So ash are just a combination of numbers and letters and all that together, just random numbers. Okay. So example of a typical ash. The typical ash can be, I hope you can see this. Let me use here. Sorry, I'm using my hands to clean the board. <laughs> so a typical ash can be 0, X, A, Y, Q, C, Z, B, 3, 2. I mean, just letters and numbers combined together. So this is an ash. So what the blockchain does is it gives each of the records, each time it stores the record, it gives it an ash. So with that hash, we can identify that particular record, that particular block. So let's say this first time now, it has its own hash. Let's call it HA. And it's equals to 0, X, A, Y, B. And I mean, it can be anything, isn't it? Now, immediately we create the second record, the blockchain gives it its own ID also, which is an hash. Let's call this hash B. And let's give it zero Z Y three two. Of course, the hash must not start with zero. But there's a reason I'm using zero. I'm just used to it, I'll, which I will show you later. Okay, it must not start with zero. Let's do this one differently. So let's say this third record now. The blockchain gives it an ID also. H C, which is equals to nine. I'm trying not to make zero the first, so we don't start believing zero must always be the first. 9xbz, something like this. So we can see, first of all, each of the records are stored as blocks, and each of these blocks has an ash. So with this ash, I think it's great we can better understand why I said each of the data are stored as blocks. Remember, this particular set of data we have, we are storing the list of the, the person that has written his or her name on the attendance sheet, and the time in which they wrote their names. So all this information we are storing at that time are all grouped together and given an ash. So it is as if this is a block. It's as if they are boxed together and given a tag. Let's imagine you want you want to buy something. Or imagine Amazon, how Amazon works, how they package their stuff. They package them things together and gives it a tag. So let's say give me parcel, so so and so. You go into that box. The box has a lot of things. 
So this is where the idea of block is coming from. So in this, um, in each time we put a record on the database, I mean on the blockchain, which is a database, we are putting the list of students that have written their name and the time, isn't it? And what the blockchain does is, for each of those records, it boxes all of them together and gives them an ID, which is an hash. So in that way, we can see that record as a block, because it encloses them together and gives them an ID. So we can either indirectly say that is a block, isn't it? So this is a block with its own ID. This is another block with its own ID. This is another block with its own ID. Now, one more thing the blockchain does is this. Each block carries the ID or the hash of the block just before it, of the immediate previous block. So, for instance, block B, this second block, is going to carry the ID of the, the block that was before it, block A, this first one here, which is... So what I just did is to write the ID of this guy here. Okay. Um, let, what I would just do, let me let me make some little adjustment to this so that um, we better appreciate it later. I'm going to wipe this off. I'm going to put the time here now. Let's see, 9.03 a.m. And I'm going to put the ash somewhere down here. Just for us to appreciate it better, okay? Not any reason. So this ash is the ash of the block just before this block. So this is this zero x a y b. Then of course I'm going to wipe this off. I'm going to bring back the time, which is nine o four a m. And I'm going to add the ID of this block, which is HC, isn't it? HB, I mean, the block, this is block C. I just call it HC, I mean, kind of. So this is the third block. This third block is also going to carry the ash of this second block, which is directly before it. So it's going to have this ash, HB, which is 0, Z, Y, 3, 2, I don't know. Of course, ashes are just, they are just combinations of letters and numbers. So this is exactly what the blockchain does. So each block has its own ID and carries the ID of the previous block, its immediate previous block. Now what you observe is this first block, it does not have any block preceding it. Okay, so this first block is usually called the Genesis block. I want to believe you can see my screen. My board, I mean, what I'm writing on the board, sorry. So this is called the Genesis block board, um, block, the Genesis block, because it doesn't have any block preceding it. It doesn't have any data set preceding it. It's the first. So it doesn't carry any ID of a previous block. But the other ones have the ID. So this guy has the ID of this one. This guy has the ID of this one. And so what, what you can observe is this. It's as if this ID, okay, don't let me make it too complex. Let's I want to believe you understand what I've just said so far. Let's take it one at a time. You understand what I've just said so far, isn't it? Makes kind of sense. All right. So another thing I must mention about this ash is this. This ash, they're actually generated. They're not just generated randomly. OK? The blockchain has a function, an algorithm with which it uses to generate them. And it is generated based on the information inside the block, based on the data inside the block. Such that if somebody comes and changes the data inside the block, the hash is going to change. Try to get it. The blockchain, this, the way the blockchain generates this hash, it doesn't just generate it randomly. It generates it based on the data inside the block. So that if someone comes and changes what is in this block, this hash is going to be changed. So the same way, this hash of the second block is generated based on the data inside the block. This hash of this third block is also generated based on the data inside the block. Of course, not just only the data, based on some other things. But one of the deciding factors is the data. So that once you change anything inside this block, the hash is going to change. And now what you can see is this. Since this block carries this one hash, this block carries this one hash, it's as if they are linked together. Are you seeing this? This, this is what I'm trying to illustrate. 
because this block has a reference to the previous the one of the pre the ash of the previous one. This block has a reference to the ash of the previous one. Of course, this is the Genesis block, so it does not have a reference to any other ash. And any other block that will come after, we also carry the ash like that, like that, like that. So indirectly, it looks as if they are linked together by these ashes. So you can see it. So this is what we mean by chain of blocks. And now why is it called a chain? Of course, it does not mean inside the computer there will be a chain connecting them. It's called a chain because these two things are tightly held together. You can't come and remove this block and try to put it somewhere here and bring this one here. Do you know why? Because automatically, this ash of this one is supposed to match with the ash of this one. So by the time I bring this block here, this ash cannot link with this one. So it will not work. The blockchain will reject it. So immediately you create a block, it's as if they are chained together. You can't remove anyone and put it somewhere else. It's as if they are tightly chained together. And if somebody comes to change the information in this block, the ash of this block is going to change. Once this ash changes, this third block here, the ash record it as here will no longer match this one. This third block will give an error. And before you know, the blockchain will reject what you are trying to do. So this is what we mean by the blockchain is immutable. It cannot be hacked because you can't come here and change any information. Once you try to change any information here, okay, you try to change something here, this ash changes. And this guy's ash can no longer recognize this guy, isn't it? Because this guy can no longer recognize this guy, this guy is going to give an error and the blockchain rejects it. You understand? And I, like I said, like, you can't just move things around because their ashes, their ashes will no longer match once you change the position. So this is what I mean by this is basically a chain of blocks. So you understand when we say that the blockchain, first of all, is a database in which records are stored as chains of block. So it's not as if there's a literal chain or there's a literal block. There's just a data set. This data set is grouped and given an ID, which we call the ash. Okay? I know you might not be able to see this clearly, but I believe you can hear me clearly. So, and subsequently, I will try to be very bold on this writing. So this um, data set, they are grouped together and given an ID, which is called the ash. Okay? And the second data set is also, they are also grouped together and given an ID, which is called the ash. And they also, this second data set also carries the ash of the data set before it. This first one does not carry any ash of the one before it because there is nothing before it. It's the Genesis block, the first block. So this data set carries the ash of the one before it. This other data set also carries the ash of the one before it and has its own ash. And because of that, they are linked together. So by the time you try to move something here, this the ash of this guy does not match with the ash of this guy. The blockchain will throw an error. Okay? Then when you try to change any data also, it changes the ash. Because I said earlier, this ash which is given to the data this grouping of the record at that instant of time, it's not just generated randomly, it's generated also based on the data inside. That's the way the code is written. It's also generated based on the so that when you change any message and the data inside, the ash will change. And once the ash changes, it doesn't match this, the blockchain will throw an error. So I believe you understand that part when I said the blockchain is um, a record, is a database in which records are stored as chains of block. So, I mean, let me take some water and we continue. All right. All right. Now, the next thing I have there, the next keyword I have there is in chronological order. Chronological order. Now, this block and this block, this second block immediately followed this block. So it's not as if we can have, remember, we're, we're also storing the time. I don't know if you can see, see this well. Let me try to make it bold. The timing I have here is 9.02. The timing I have here, I'm just assuming they follow each other minute by minute, okay? So, we're just still working with a lot of assumptions. It's 9.03. The time we have here is 9.04. So these records on the blockchain are chronological in the sense that you can't come and have a record of something that happened in 9.04 before a record in 9.03. You can't have this. It's impossible. So what you're going to have is this, 
904. So, so this is basically what you can have. It is chronological as the records are happening, the blockchain stores them. Of course, there are a lot of challenges that in real applied blockchain, it can be very crazy to really prove that this is what is happening. We are going to see that. So, but this is basically what we expect. Ideally, the blockchain stores this data chronologically. So this guy actually happened before this guy. So that at this point in time, we can really vouch because this chronological is very, very important to avoid a lot of errors. Because this data can be an update to this data. So that if this guy comes first before this one, then there's, there's people will be like, what's happening? So I know it might, be, it might look a little confused, but we'll see a lot of examples and it will make it very clear. I don't want it to be so confusing to you. So, but the idea is the blockchain stores this data chronologically, okay, as it is happening. The one that happened comes first before the later. Okay, the first to happen, take the position. So as it happens, it is stored. Okay? So, <laughs> all right, I believe you, you get that part. I mean, it's very, very simple. It's not rocket science. Now, the next keyword is that these records are distributed and managed by a cluster of computers. So, the first thing, the, the key word there is, another key word here is, distributed and managed okay by a cluster of computers now most of the codes you've been writing perhaps you've been building things with a um, postgres or you've been using uh, mongodb or you've been trying to use sql for one or two things or the other to write your database in whatever language you've been using so far okay so in the database you've been creating so far have you ever asked yourself this perhaps you have a website where you do one or two things, or you have an app where you do one or two things. If you want to say, this database, where is it stored? Okay, you have your website, you host your website somewhere. Where is this my website and the, the database alongside it? Is, where is it stored online? It's already stored on a server. Okay, so your hosting provider, they have a server that they, where they also provide you with a database, like a storage part. So you can store your data on that server. And of course, this data usually, except for some other serious companies that try to store their information on many other servers, this data, this server is just one server. So that if an attacker attacks that one server, you are most likely to lose your files. So, but the blockchain, this record that is happening, is not stored on one computer. It's not stored on one server. It is stored on several servers at the same instant of time. So, maybe this record happen. As we have a new list, this new list is going to be stored. And distributed across all the computers connected to the blockchain network to that particular blockchain network so the blockchain record is not stored on one computer it's stored across different computers okay so that's the first thing to remember so you when you host your website you have a server for instance google now has a server server managing everything about google whatsapp has a server facebook has a server this board is up there server okay and of course, we've seen a lot of challenges with these servers. I don't want to go into that. Okay, I'll come back into that later. We'll see the beauty of it. So, but the question about the blockchain and the beautiful thing about the blockchain is this record is not stored on just one server or just one computer. It is stored across different computers. So that will be by distributed and managed by a cluster of computers. So, with that, I believe you have, at least to the basic level, an understanding of what the blockchain is. So first of all, it is a database. Of course, by database, I mean it's a record of data, isn't it? And of course, not just any record. It can be easily accessed and the rest. So it's a database in which these data are stored as chains of block. I've been able to try to explain to you what I mean by chains of block. And this record that are stored by chains of block are distributed and managed by a cluster of computers. There's no one single computer that's in charge of the whole thing. The information is not in one single server or one single computer. It's, a, it's across different computers at different places, different location, at different time. I don't know. Let's say at the same time. Sorry, pardon me with that. I know there can be a little time lapse. Very, very tiny though. So, but this thing is managed by a cluster of computers, not just one. Okay? So, that is on the simplest from the, the definition of the blockchain. Then the other thing I have here is that the information is um, 
encrypted using cryptography to ensure that the privacy of the user is not compromised. Okay, so most of this information now you can't just go to the database and start seeing them. They are super. I mean, they are encrypted using cryptography. They are carefully encrypted using cryptography. So there's a way, even this hash, for instance, you can see this hash the way it's generated. Okay, there's an algorithm that uses this hash. So this is what we call cryptography. And we will see. When we start defining some terms, we'll see what we mean by cryptography. So, but this information, apart from just being chains or blocks, this apart from being distributed across different computers, they are encrypted using cryptography to further protect the privacy of the user so that, and not anybody that has access to that database can start saying things anyhow like that. Okay, so you can see. It is very, very quick. First of all, things are stored as chains of block, meaning you can't move things from one way to another. The hashing is, of course, you know how the hashing is generated, so you can't just change anything anyhow, because the hash will change and it cause a lot of error. And again, the information is not just on one computer. So if you like, go to a lot of servers, attack many, many servers. There are a lot of millions or tens of thousands of other computers that still have that record. So you see it. And again, the, the information is now encrypted using cryptography. You can see layers and layers and layers of security that the blockchain is trying to provide. Okay, so but this on, on, on a very shallow level at least is what the blockchain is. So I'll read it again so that you can hear. The blockchain is simply a database in which records are stored as chains of blocks in chronological order and these records are distributed or managed by a cluster of computers. That's the definition. Then I go further to say the information is encrypted using cryptography to ensure that the privacy of the user is not compromised and the data cannot be altered. Okay? Alright. So that is it for what um, the blockchain is. I